word problems, also sometimes called real-world problems, are sometimes the most difficult for students. And the hard part isn't usually doing the math, but translating from the words to the math. And these problems are all different from one another, so it's not like I can tell you the exact steps you can take with each problem. But what I can do is I can give you some strategies that you can use with these types of problems. Here they are. First, if, you're, if you have a paper test or homework assignment, always underline when you can. And definitely, either way, write down the key information that's in the problem. As you're doing that, figure out what the question is actually asking for. It may not be what you originally thought. And usually what you'll do is whatever that question is asking for, that's what your variable will be. Use different strategies to organize your thinking. Lots of people like to make a chart or a table or draw the situation out. It's not, um, you don't always have to do things that are just math. You can also make pictures that represent the real world and charts and drawings are two kinds of those pictures. What you'll eventually want to do is translate from the words into an equation and then you'll be able to solve the equation pretty easily. Take the time. A lot of students don't take the time to get their thinking right. They just start diving into math saying, oh, I should multiply this by this or don't I divide this? Really the most important thing is to organize your thinking first, translate those words into an equation and then you'll be able to solve it. So don't jump too quickly to doing the math. And finally, these are real world situations. So check your answer to make sure that it makes sense in the real world scenario. Okay, let's try a couple of problems to use these strategies. Okay, let's take a look at a problem and use our strategies while we're solving this problem. A bathtub has 43 gallons of water in it and is draining at a rate of two gallons per minute. How many minutes will it be until the bathtub has 27 gallons. Okay, so notice how I underlined key information as I read the problem. You should do that too. Now let's try to figure out what it is that the question is asking for. Well, if we look carefully, it says, how many minutes will it be until the bathtub has 27 gallons? So what we need to do is look for minutes. And if we're looking for something that's minutes, we can use whatever variable we want, but maybe we should use t for time. So that's what the question is asking for. Now in this case, it might be good to go ahead and draw a picture because we can just kind of draw a bathtub here and we put in our key information into the picture. So let's see, it has 43 gallons and it's draining, so there's water coming out of the bathtub and it's draining at two gallons per minute. Now let's see if it's one minute, that would be two gallons. Two minutes would be four gallons. Three minutes would be six gallons. So actually, it's draining at two times the number of minutes. So that's a key thing to understand here. Now we understand that our variable is what we're looking for, and we're using our variable in our picture here too. And now the question is, when does, do those, when does the amount of water in the bathtub equal 27? gallons. So now we can move to our next step here, which is to translate from words into an equation. So we have this picture that we've drawn here, and what we can do is then we can say, okay, so we start with 43, and we're minusing 2t gallons, and that's going to equal 27. And here we've got the equation that we were looking for. From there, it's pretty easy to solve. We'll just minus 43 from both sides, so then we'll have negative 2t equals, that will be negative 16. And then we can divide by negative 2, and that makes t equals 8, and there's our answer. So the important thing here is, and I just kind of raced through the the math here at the end. That's not what really, really what we're practicing here. What we're practicing is getting from this word problem to an actual equation here and taking the time to do that to make sure that we're getting the problem right. Now let's do this last step. Check your answer to see if it makes sense. Okay, so let's see. We have eight minutes is what we're saying. So if in eight minutes 
two gallons per minute, that would be 16 gallons, eight times two. If it starts with 43, 16 gallons, yep, that will be 27, so it makes sense. Let's try one more. Remember, while we do this problem, let's use our strategies over here. So first we'll be underlining. Two bicyclists are competing in a 200 mile race. Cyclist A is at the 120 mile mark and is traveling at 12 miles an hour. So we'll remember that about cyclist A. Okay. Cyclist B is only at the 90 mile mark, but is traveling at 18 miles an hour. Okay, so that's for cyclist B there. If they keep up the same pace, how long will it be until cyclist B passes cyclist A? And at what mile marker will that happen? So what is the question asking? Well, it's how long will it be and at what mile mark? So it's actually asking for two things. Now in, in a situation like this, it's actually really good to draw a picture because then you can really make sense of what the problem is asking for. So let's go ahead and draw a picture here. There's a race that's 200 miles long. So it would go from here to here and it starts at zero and goes to 200. And then we can say, okay, cyclist uh, A is at the 120 mile mark. So a little over halfway, there's cyclist A at 120. And then cyclist B is only at the 90 mile mark, so a little less. So here's cyclist A and here's cyclist B. Okay, now we know that cyclist B is traveling faster at 18 miles an hour. So eventually, at some point out here in the future, they're going to pass. Cyclist B is going to pass cyclist A. And what we want to know is how long will it be until that happens and at what mile marker will that be at? So in order to think about that, one of the things we can do is we can say, okay, well, what at this point, how do we know what will that distance be for cyclist A? Well, let's see here. For cyclist A, right now we can say that cyclist A, and here we're kind of making a chart too, is at 120, and um, each hour will add 12 more miles. So 120 plus 12t. Now cyclist B, where do they start? Yeah, cyclist B starts at 90, and then is every hour is adding 18 miles. So here you see we're using one of our strategies to just kind of organize our thinking with a chart here. Now, what the question is asking for is when they pass each other, and if you realize, if you think about it, they will be at the same point then. Their distance, and this is the distance of cyclist A, and this is the distance of cyclist B, then they'll be equal. So what we want to do is set these two things equal to each other. So 120 plus 12t equals 90 plus 18t. Now I'm just going to solve this really quick because what we're really practicing here is setting this up, which you've re this is the hard part, getting from all these words to this equation right here. So if we subtract 12t from both sides, we'll get 6t on the right side. And if we subtract 90 from both sides, we'll get 30 on the left-hand side. Divide both by 6, and we get t equals 5. So what does that mean? It means in 5 hours, cyclist B will pass cyclist A. So let's see if that makes sense. In 5 hours, cyclist B here will be at 90 plus 5 times 18. Hmm, 5 times 18, what is that? Oh, that's 50 plus 40 is 90. So 90 plus 90, the, the cyclist uh, B at, um, at 5 hours will be at 180 miles. That's where cyclist B will be at the mile marker. And how about cyclist A? Well, cyclist A will start at 120, and 12 times 5 is 60, so 120. Ah, cyclist A is also going to be at the 180 mile marker. And you can see it's a little bit tricky here. What we've done is we've actually answered 
the second part of the question, at what mile mark will that happen, as we were checking our answer. Because we see that when cyclist B will be at 180 miles and cyclist A will be at 180 miles, that's what this um, point is over here. And they'll be there after five hours. So there are your two answers, five hours and 180 miles. Now, the key thing isn't necessarily just getting to the right answer here. The key thing is using these strategies because these word problems will always have a lot of information in them. You want to take that information, make your diagrams, um, translate from words into an equation, and then finally, take, taking the time to get it right, then do the math, which is usually the easier part, and then check your answer to see if it makes sense.